Well, we're up to, uh, let's call it part two, the last day's message, the last message, the Jews' last day message. And if you've not had a moment to do so, please have a look at part one. And that is also called the last day's message or the Jews' last day's message. Now, I refresh your memory with the chart that I put up on the previous report. And then we'll quickly run through what was so much an abomination to Yahweh that the Israel people, the Judah people, what they did back in the 5th and the 6th century, so much, so bad, that Yahweh totally re rejected them and will have nothing to do with them and said he would not even hear any prayers from them. And of course... Uh, Millions have died because they they were taught not to pray to Yahweh. They were taught to pray to Hashem. So have a look at this uh, chart with me first. Now, I gave you this chart to give you an idea of how to understand what has happened over the last 2,500 years, even though the chart goes all the way through to nearly 3,000 years. The main point that I want to remind you about in that middle group there, 650 and 586 BC, that is when all of the people were exiled by the hand of Yahweh to Babylon. They were exiled because they were very wicked and sinful and so evil and were conducting their lives in such an abomination that Yahweh not only exiled them, but he also uh, made it quite clear that they were speaking in his name. But not with his words. And in other words, they were, uh, they had usurped the power of priests and rabbis and they were teaching a load of nonsense and false doctrine to the people. And that is what I'm going to show you with proof that what they were teaching then that was such an abomination to Yahweh is still with us today. Now you will recall in the last report that one of the main things that has come through which Yahweh was explicit in saying they're not to do, and that was to create what is now called the Talmud, the Palestinian and the Babylonian Talmud and the Mishnah. Now, this was one of the greatest sins that Yahweh poured, uh, regarded with the people and one of the reasons why he turned his back from them. So we understand how that came all the way through for the last couple of thousand years. I'm going to mention a couple of the sages or the people that are responsible for that. Let's go back to Judah Hanasi, 135 to 220 in the Common Era. He's one of the last of the Tanaim, a small group of Palestinian masters of the Jewish oral law, the Mishnah, the Talmud. Now I might say that Back in, in uh, Babylon, they had a, a, um, a group of 120 of these false priests or rabbis. Now, Judah Harnassi, uh, Gamaliel mentioned in the New Testament in the book of Acts, the fellow that um, Paul said he was uh, tutored from. Gamaliel uh, took over the community of the Sanhedrin and from there also we will go to a fellow called David Kimhai, 1160 to 1285. He is also known in the Hebrew acronym as Radak. Now he was a medieval rabbi from Narbonne in the province. He was the son of Rabbi Joseph Kimhai, the brother of Rabbi Moses Kimhai. The next one we'll go to that... Uh, is a Talmudic scholar and skillful in producing the Talmud. His name is Rashi, which was Sh uh, Shlomo Yitschaki of France, 1040 to 1105. Rashi composed the Talmud commentary. So we're so far realizing with proof that these rabbis, these sages, going all the way back, were doing exactly what the uh, Yahweh said they were not to do. 
Then you can come forward to uh, 1286, 1344, and there's another fella called Levi Ben Gershon. He's uh, also known as Gersonides, and that is an abbreviation of the first letters he is seen in the commentaries as Ralbag. He had a distinguished exegetical skill in the Talmud. These are the people that have perpetrated and regurgitated the same illegal and doctrine and false teaching that Yahweh exiled them all for 2,500 years ago. So you can see, you can easily realize that from uh, Judah Harnassi to uh, Hillel, then Gamaliel, they carried forward the same false teaching that had been prevalent that Yahweh said it is false. Take no, don't, take no notice of these people who are teaching the false statements. You come all the way through to other things that, that, that we have inherited out of the Babylonian exile. Remember, these people think that they are his people. They're still convinced in their heart that they belong to Yahweh. When Yahweh had made it quite clear that no longer would he recognize them and he wouldn't even hear prayers that would come from them. One of the other things that came out of Babylon also is uh, uh, the uh, issue of immortality. Now, I'll read a little note here. They say, and uh, this is the same today in the, in the Lubavitch, the Orthodox Judaism and, and the Hasidic movement, that the material intellect is mortal and dies with the body. But then they go on to say that they adopt what Ralbag's theory was, that the soul has an acquired intellect which survives death and can contain accumulated knowledge that the person acquired it during their lifetime. Ralbag points out that man is immortal insofar as he attains the intellectual perfection that is open to him. In other words, they believe in reincarnation and every time uh, the soul comes back into another person, uh, that person has a greater, higher level of righteousness. Now, I, I was talking to a rabbi one day about this and I said, well, all right then, if you believe in reincarnation and the soul can come back two or three or four times, and do you believe in the judgment day of uh, Yahweh? Of course, he said, of course. I said, well, which one of those two or the third or the fourth person is judged according to the good book? He couldn't answer me. So you see, these kinds of false doctrines that they were teaching the people way back there 2,500 years ago is still with us today because that is what they believe today. There's one more thing that came out of there, and this is also prevalent in the in the Greeks, we're talking about a golem. I'll spell it for you, G-O-L-E-M. A golem, they called Adam a golem because he was a body without a soul. In other words, they believe that they could mould a body of a human being in the mud, in the dirt, put life into it. In other words, usurping the power of Yahweh the Creator and to create a monstrosity. The um, fellow called Rabbi Judah Lu from Prague, 1513 through to 1609, it is said that he made one of these golems uh, to help the people and to protect the people. So I don't know what you believe, but I'll tell you something, that is absolute nonsense and that's, a, that's what they were teaching the people back there that Yahweh said, they're not my people, take no notice of them, they speak falsehood. Now, another uh, item that came out of the uh, corrupted rabbis, priests from Babylon, that angered Yahweh very much, is phylacteries. 
Phylacteries are mentioned quite often in the Talmud and the Mishnah. Is in fact, in fact, Maimonides, another sage, 1150 AD, he details that the tefillin are on the head and on the arm of a man, then he is an honest, God-fearing person. They will go on to say that uh, any person that's not wearing a yarmulke uh, is a skull that does not wear tef tefillin, is a sinner. So you see, I said to a rabbi one day, I said, but all right then, uh, why do you wear the yarmulke? And why do you wear the kippah? Why do you, why do you wear the tefillin? Could you imagine any of the uh, patriarchs or David riding a horse along with a cap on his head? Don't think so. And uh, you see, they've, uh, they have adopted all of the pagan rituals and garb that came out of both Babylon and Egypt. There's no wonder that Yahweh God uh, wants to annihilate them and rejected them. Now, there's a lot of notes and there's a lot of references concerning this. I'll put them up on the screen for you so that you can do your own research. Now, there's another reason why Yahweh was very angry with these people and their false doctrines. And that's talking about the law or the Torah, the first five books of Moses and their oral law. Both in the Judaism and Zohar, Judaism teach that the law that they were given were for the Jews alone. And it's wrong for Gentiles to read the law. That's what it says in their Talmud. In other words, they think that they, uh, the privileged people, they've got a hotline to Yahweh God and nobody else has um, an opportunity to read the law when that is totally opposite to what Yahweh says in the, in the good book. They also teach that a goy or a Gentile that pries into the law, it says in the Talmud, is worthy of death. Now, there's one thing about one of the groups of, of Jews which are called Karait Jews, they rejected all this and they do not go along with the teachings of the Talmud and the oral law. There's one more thing. Out of Babylon came the, and in the Talmud and the oral law, comes the seven Noahide laws. Now it's interesting to note that uh, recently, over the last couple of years, the seven Noahide laws were presented to Congress, the United States government, and the Noahide laws were adopted to be the law over all of the judicial systems. This is to supersede the Ten Commandments of God. And you will note over the last three or four years that the Ten Commandments have been removed from most of the courts of justice. Now, when those laws are current and operative, I can assure you it will be a terrible day for the whole world. One of the most terrible things that's happened through this oral law, this Talmud, this group of people, when they were warned and warned and warned to give up their evil ways, I'll, I'll put it to you this way, Yahweh was so angry with all the people that he issued a decree of evil on them. And he issued a decree that his name, Yahweh, will not be uttered in their mouth. And Yahweh caused the king of Babylon then to come and take them into captivity in 586 BC. And you'll read all about that in Jeremiah 44, 15 to 29. Now below is some of the results of that decree. And you'll notice that as that was given to Jeremiah late in the third century, 400, 450 BC, the Talmud states, uttering the holy name Yahweh is blasphemy and they do not know how to pronounce it. 
the prohibition of blasphemy for which capital punishment, death, is prescribed in the Talmud refers to speaking the word Yahweh. And I'll put the reference up on the screen for you. They teach that the four-letter name of God, Yahweh, is forbidden to be uttered. So their mind, their brain, Yahweh had come into their brain and said, you're no longer going to utter my holy name. But as a result of this, this is really sad. You've got over six million innocent people that were taught by their rabbis to pray to Hashem. They're taught by the rabbis to pray to Hashem. They were unable to pray direct to Yahweh for fear of death whilst in those concentration camps. Is it any wonder that Yahweh turned his back on their prayers? And to this day, Jews will not utter his holy name in prayer. And Yahweh's decree in item one is still current. Now I might add, Christian Bibles replace the name of Yahweh as the Lord. And there is no name Jesus referred to in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, I mean. The New Testament is, sorry, there's no name Jesus referred to in the Old Testament. And the New Testament is also an illegal document because it's something that was added on to Yahweh's words. And Yahweh said, do not add to my words. Now, I'm going to close this report in a moment or two. But before I close, going back to the soul and what the Bible says, what Yahweh says about the soul, which you will see is totally the opposite to what the Jews in the oral law came out of Babylon with. Okay. If a man is righteous and practices justice and righteousness, he does not partake of idolatrous sacrifices upon the mountains. He does not lift his eyes towards the idols of the house of Israel. Does not defile his neighbor's wife nor approach an impure woman. Does not oppress any man, returns collateral for debts. Does not rob any loot, gives his bread to the hungry and covers the naked with clothing. Does not give loans with usury nor take interest withholds his hand from corruption, executes true justice between man and man, and goes according to my decrees and observes my ordinances and observes my laws and practice truth. He is a righteous man and his soul shall live. He shall surely live the word of Yahweh. That is what will be in the mind of those chosen ones at the end of time after his day of wrath. They are the people that will be the second group of Israel that's called forth from the four corners of the earth. That is the new Israel that will be redeemed. Now I'll put up for you the, um, the uh, list of references and I'll just give you a, a quick rundown of what they are. Just let me get myself organised here. Now these are the points that you can investigate, do your own research and you will come to the conclusions that I've been giving to you. One, two, three and four, the numbered. Redeemed will be pure of heart, heeding Yahweh's laws. People will understand it in the last days and will show and will know his name that it is Yahweh and he makes a promise that if you seek me diligently with all your heart he says I will answer you he will pour out though his wrath on those who don't call out to his name and that applies to the Jews there's no sense in praying to or calling out to Hashem Yahweh is the God over all the kingdoms of the earth it's a little bit different to what they teach he will ultimately destroy all the nations of the earth, and that's a promise. The rabbis, false teachers, Christian preachers will not survive his day of judgment, and Yahweh will refuse to hear 
their prayers. Jews think the ten tribes who were taken captive because of their evil waves will be redeemed. That's false. And that's in their Talmud. Yahweh will gather from the four corners of the earth his faithful, his chosen people. On his day of wrath he will destroy the Nile, the, the Euphrates River, Damascus and Jerusalem. Jerusalem will be a heap of rubble. Now I'm going to put these up on the screen and you've got all of the texts and references to go to. Yahweh says he will destroy this earth and he will shake the earth and he will shake the heavens. But he also says he will create a new earth and a new heavens and his chosen ones, the second group of Israel, will inherit it. Satan and the forces of evil will be destroyed. And about the new Israel, the second group is Israel. There's a whole list of texts for you there. Yahweh has decreed evil on Jerusalem and its people and all the nations of the earth. Now, one point about Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, he was by the hand of Yahweh told to take the people captive. And there's all of the text in reference to that. So I'll, I'll round off this report. You've got a lot of references to look up if you want to do your own research. But I can assure you that what I've given to you is straight out of the old book. And we are in a serious position because we've been deceived and duped. And as you will see in one of my previous reports, the secret societies with their combined oath, they are behind the false doctrines, they are behind every religion. They lay claim that they are in control of every, every religion. And as you can see, their forces, the forces of evil, the forces of Satan forces, were way active, way back there 2,500 years ago, and the false teachings that were being taught to the people has caused millions of them to die, to be murdered, and to be slaughtered, and that is so terrible. I just wish you and your family that Yahweh blesses you with understanding of his word.